morning on this Pentecost morning. And welcome to Main Creek Church, where God is still speaking and God's work is done through our hands. Today we will be sharing communion, so if you don't have your communion elements, bread, crackers, wine, juice, whatever you want to use, uh, you have a little while here to get it together. <clears throat> We are continuing with our book study. Uh, we didn't meet last uh, week on Memorial Day. Finding Faith in a Pandemic. And we're meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. And we're discussing chapters two and three. So if you want to be part of this discussion, you can still have time. You have time to download that book because it's only 20 pages. We will continue to have prayer time at 7 o'clock on Wednesday on Facebook Live. <clears throat> Please know, we have formed a team to make plans to discuss and put into place what we need to begin meeting in person. And there is so much to think about. Handing out bulletins, touching doorknobs, sanitizing bathrooms, sitting six feet apart. So as we move into this yellow phase, we will not meet in person. We will continue to meet online. We want everyone to be safe. And meeting in one room with 150 people is certainly not safe at this time. And if we err in our decisions, it will be on the side of caution and keeping the most vulnerable in our community safe. As I have been saying, Maiden Creek Church may have left the building, but we have never stopped being the church. Andy Schumann, if you're watching, I think we should design some t-shirts that say this. And now our senior spotlight today is Jake Hess. Hi, I'm Jay Kess. Um, I'm going to Point Park University, that is um, in Pittsburgh, and I'm studying sports and business management, and I'm playing baseball. Um, during quarantine, I've been helping my parents around in the house and working out a lot. Thank you, Jake, and congratulations on your graduation and on being accepted by the college. And now Jeff will ring that bell and let the neighborhood know we are here. Well, we are worshiping God, maybe not here physically, but as a faith community. given to us through our baptism. We are gathered in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Spirit with water and with fire, come and be the renewal for our soul. Spirit with word and with song, come and be the transformation in our worship. Spirit with passion and with intent, Come and be the stir in our faith. Spirit with promise and with grace, come and be the enlivening of our church. Spirit with love and with hope, come and be among us. Come, come let, let us worship. Pentecost God, we thank you for the gift of the Spirit, for the power and the energy the Spirit brings, and for the knowledge that we are not alone. Nevertheless, sometimes we find it hard to believe in things we cannot see or touch. We remember the times we have not recognized the Spirit's still, small voice. The times we have ignored the Spirit's prompting. The times we have not acknowledged the Spirit's work around us. 
the times we have resisted the Spirit's transforming power. We remember and we are sorry. Pour out your Spirit anew. Flow through us and ignite us once more. Our God is always making all things new our shortcomings are forgotten, and we can begin again with God's Spirit as our helper. Thanks be to God. with you. Christ is in our midst. Let us pray. Loving Creator, Spirit Wind, Flame of Justice, blow your Spirit upon us. Send it to challenge and comfort us. Let it be the lifeblood that pulses through our veins, that we might be made whole and new. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come and they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking 
in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. Holy wisdom, holy word. Today is Pentecost, the day the Holy Spirit came down upon the disciples and all who were gathered there with them. It's hard for us to imagine anything like that happening, that when the Holy Spirit came down, people started acting crazy and to the point that others thought they were drunk. Or is it? Remember that Boy Scout Sunday when we sang This Little Light of Mine? We had glow sticks to hold up and wave while we were singing. The Boy Scouts, the choir, the congregation, everyone was singing, holding up their hands or their glow sticks, waving their arms. And I believe that the Holy Spirit entered this room that morning. It was not just about getting caught up in the song. There was an energy in that room that you could, in this room, that you could actually feel. The Holy Spirit always surprises us. Even though we're touched by the Holy Spirit in many different ways, oftentimes we don't even realize it until when we look back on an event. It seems like in hindsight, we can see the Spirit's work, but while it's happening, we don't always notice it. In today's text, the Holy Spirit's described as a rush of wind. And that could be part of why when I think of the Holy Spirit, I hear movement, like wind chimes playing. Not really a song, just random notes without real rhythm. The sense of movement. I also envision the Holy Spirit as movement. For those of you that read the book The Shack, the Spirit was constantly moving and even changing colors in the aura around her. Lately, my image of the Holy Spirit has been a dancer, moving, jumping, dancing. I see Anya depicting the Spirit in her dancing. There's movement and joy. She's having fun. When Anya danced as a spirit in this song, she touches, inspires, empowers those who call on the Spirit. How do you see the Spirit? Or maybe you never really thought about what the Spirit looks like. You only noticed how the Spirit works in your life, in the life of your faith community, in the life of the world around you. 
When we think of the Spirit, usually the first place we think about is at church. Makes sense. We tend to all be together, sometimes in person and sometimes virtually. But when we gather as a faith community, worshiping, there are times when we actually notice the Spirit showed up. We can find the Spirit with us whenever we gather as a faith community, even when only a few of us are gathered. I believe the Spirit touches us every week during the worship with the gift of music. We have so many people who share that gift with us. There is no way I could have included everyone, so I apologize. But there are just as many of us who do not provide music, who are moved and touched by the Spirit through that music. Of course, we have to remember how the children are touched by the Spirit and how the Spirit touches us through them. The Spirit also helps us touch others through service both within and especially outside of this building. With the help of the Spirit, we share what we have and help make a difference in our community and the world. I know we provide many more services to our community than we have shown, but there's just so many pictures that I have just don't have time to go through all of them, and sometimes we do things and forget our camera. The Holy Spirit flows through all aspects of our lives, and we don't always notice. On one post on Facebook, a person asked me, why are you asking pictures of the Holy Spirit? Isn't the Holy Spirit everywhere? In a newborn baby and an old tree? And I agreed with her completely. However, how often do we see the Holy Spirit in our everyday life? How often do we recognize the Spirit in that dead tree? How often are we so excited to hold that new baby? We fail to see the Spirit at work. 
The Holy Spirit is here, pushing us through this crazy time, giving us glimpses of its work, reminding us it never left. Finding, noticing, reflecting on the Holy Spirit's work within our lives can be a meditation in itself. It can ground us in our faith, calm us in our time of stress, and change our perspective of the world. Here are the pictures that you sent on where you find the Holy Spirit. May you continue to find the Holy Spirit in your daily life. Amen. Come the fount of every blessing to my heart to sing thy praise. Dreams of mercy type the names of people you would like to lift up in prayer, but please only use first names. Let us pray. Holy Spirit of God, the spark of divine love unites us across the divisions of background and ability, language and culture. Yet the same Spirit makes us different, equipping us with various gifts, calling us to serve in different ways. Whatever our individual calling, whoever we are, the breath of the Spirit fans into being the qualities of the God life. God of love, we pray for people living where there is hatred and intolerance, violence and lack of respect. 
We particularly at this time pray for the family of George Lloyd and ask that you would help each of us to examine ourselves for hatred and intolerance. Breathe on us, Holy Spirit of God. May our lives show your love. God of kindness, thank you for random acts of kindness which show that people genuinely care. Spark our imaginations to see how we might brighten someone else's life today. Breathe on us, Holy Spirit of God. May our lives show your kindness. Lord, we ask that you surround all those listed and those on our hearts with your light and healing love. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, who is in the spirit of Pentecost, you have given us so much. Christ, to inspire us, your spirit, to enable us, your love, to support us. We bring these offerings that others may be inspired, enabled, and supported. There are several ways to give to the church. You can text your offering to 610-490-8292. You can give online at www.maidencreekchurch.org, or you can send your envelope to the church. We understand these are scary and difficult times. It is, it is also for the church who continues to have expenses. Thank you. 
uncertain of the next moment. And suddenly, something beyond description, a moment when time stood still. Wind and fire and a new life burst upon them. Your spirit, O oh God, blowing through them anew. As they spoke, they found they could understand one another. As they gazed in wonder, they found new truths, shared in voices they had not heard before. As the Spirit came upon them, O oh God, they send it to be upon us now. On young and old, women and men, as we share these elements that reconnect us to Christ, help us to dream dreams and see visions, and in all this know that you are our God, and we are your people. Nourish us, strengthen us, renew us, and send us forth into the world to do your work. We remember that night that Jesus sat at the table with his disciples, knowing they'd betray him, knowing he told them a lot of what they needed to know, but not everything. And while they were sitting there, Jesus took the bread, and he gave thanks, and he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said to them, this is my body, given for you and for many. And then that same night as they finished that meal, he took the cup. And he poured it out, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant given to you through my blood. Do this whenever you are together. Breathe now upon this bread and wine here and at the tables at our homes and everywhere. Breathe now upon your people who feast on these gifts. Infuse us again with your spirit of new life. This is the body of Christ, bread from heaven, given for you. Take and eat.
This is the cup of the new covenant. Christ's blood shed for us a cup of blessing. Take and drink. And for all of you who do not commune, may God bless you and keep you. May God be with you. May the Holy Spirit come down upon you. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. Thank you for bringing us to this table. As the disciples experienced Pentecost long ago, May we, too, be infused with your spirit. May we hear anew the call to be the body of Christ. May our lives reflect your presence within and among us. Amen. Pastor Betsy, would you like to come forward? We want to congratulate you on your graduation from Lancaster Theological Seminary. Betsy received her Master's of Divinity degree, and she also received three awards. The Nevin R. France Prize in Rural Church Ministry and the Rural Church Prize. And the Herman M. Lutz Prize in Christian Education. And Sunday School Youth, it's because of you that she received the Christian Education Award. You helped teach her. Remember, when she was helping in your classrooms, not everyone knows, Pastor Betsy went to each classroom, spent some time observing, and then taught a lesson. Well. For all of them except kindergarten and first grade because we stopped meeting before she gave her lesson. But thank you students for helping Betsy get that prize. Today, we have been talking about the many gifts of the Holy Spirit. And God, we thank you for the gift of our student pastor, Betsy McGeorge. Pastor Betsy ministered to us these past two years, and we give thanks for her words of inspiration, acts of pastoral care, for teaching our youth, and for her leadership. Betsy is not leaving Maiden Creek Church. However, she is no longer our student pastor, and we say goodbye to you as your role of student pastor. And we welcome you, Betsy, as a member of this faith community of Maiden Creek Church. We look forward to you being an active member of this community and we offer our support as you journey toward ordination. So we ask God to continue to be with you and guide you on your journey towards ordination and wherever else. God takes you. Amen. And we are all clapping for you. <laughs> Even though you can't hear everyone <laughs> clap. And sitting right there on the piano is a gift for you for your graduation and for being a student pastor. Thank you. Um, it's not really the time to go out and buy things, so you Thank can you. get what you need. <laughs> yes. And now... Go in peace and discover the gifts of the Holy Spirit in our gathered community of faith and in the world around us. And may the winds of renewal continue to blow, creating more justice, more fairness, and more love. And may God bless you and keep you, and may God always send that Holy Spirit upon you. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Amen.